what kind of Asian are you? Don't worry, I'm not questioning you. It was actually a comedy video I saw recently. Let me set the scene for you. The video begins in an open ground where a woman is simply taking her morning stretch. When a man who was jogging sees her and slows down. He assumes that she must be from East Asia, probably because of her most dominant facial features. So he walks up to her, and after they greet each other, he's amazed by her flawless American English. So he asks, where are you from? Your English is perfect. Oh, San Diego. We speak English there. No, where are you from? So she replies that she was born in Orange County, which is in California, America, by the way, but she never really lived there. But this man is simply trying ways to phrase his question to get her to say some place from East Asia. So he asks, no, I mean before that. Before I was born? Well, my great-grandmother is from Seoul. The man is finally happy, for he got the reply he was desperately waiting for. Korean! I knew it! I was thinking of either Japanese or Korean, but I was definitely leaning more towards Korean. He says that there is a really cool teriyaki barbecue place near his apartment, and adds that he loves kimchi which is a traditional Korean dish. This was just the first half of the video, and it already got so interesting. And unfortunately, such kind of cultural assumptions and stereotypes are quite common these days. When we meet and interact with someone new, we learn a lot about their identity, right? Starting from their name, family background, ethnicity, religion, culture, interest, work, life experiences, and so on. But sometimes, even before we have initiated conversation with them, we have already judged them, based on their facial features, hairstyle, skin color, dressing sense. And if you happen to overhear them speak, then by their accent too which can be justified, to be honest, keeping in mind that people from different places look different and behave different. So it's easy to make a guess by simply having a glance. But we are in the 21st century, where people are culturally more mixed, more diverse. So these guesses will not be right anymore. If you noticed, the man did a similar thing. He assumed the woman was Korean and was in complete acceptance of that fact. He even tried to fit in a little, sound welcoming. But the main point he failed to realize was that the woman recognized herself as an American, a native English speaker. Diversity teaches us to accept people Sadly, the truth is that when we dislike parts of someone's identity, or we don't agree with them, or if we feel uncomfortable, we end up distancing ourselves from them, or cutting them off, or ask questions or pass comments that make them doubt their very own identity. So is acceptance simply a facade in the name of diversity? Like the woman, I have been put on the spotlight of cultural commentary for a major part of my life, too. Especially when I was small and immature to define my identity. Let me give you a little backstory. My parents come from two different cultural and religious backgrounds. My mother is a Tamil Brahmin, which is a caste within the Hindu society. And my father, is a Tamil Roman Catholic. And as Indians, we come from a society where it seems ideal for the wife to accept the culture of her husband. And the same is expected from the children as well. Luckily, 
my household has been very open-minded. So I grew up receiving exposure from both sides since childhood. Apart from that, being raised in the United Arab Emirates with multiple ethnicities around me has simply broadened my perspective on cultural diversity. I have lived and practiced traditions, rituals, festivals of both sides. And now it is a part of me. It is what I truly enjoy. It is who I am. My cultural identity has a little unique touch to it, right? But am I completely accepted for that? It took a great deal of time and effort to make me comfortable in my own skin. Hence now, it was time for me to make sure that I don't put others in the same spot and make judgments on them. So I practiced something called the third person point of view. You might have heard it in grammar. The third person point of view belongs to the person being talked about. Like when a narrator narrates a story that doesn't involve themselves. Or say like a judge or an umpire. If you notice, these roles are very rational that allow them to make fair decisions. Decisions that don't have much emotional involvement or favoritism to any party. See, we all have certain morals and beliefs within us. And when something challenges or clashes with our morals, we believe that this new entry is wrong, it's dangerous. Just with the very minimum information that we are embedded with, we go ahead and make judgments. So the third person point of view helps shifting our mindsets. From how is that possible? to, wow, that is something new. From, why are you doing this? To, oh, tell me about what you do. Change that habit of suspicion, the doubt, and the cold attitude to having the curiosity to learn, to accept, and to simply be more welcoming. This concept realization struck me after so long. But why? Because people have told me many things too. For example, your name is Vanessa. You don't look like someone named Vanessa. Your name should have been Sangeeta instead. Another one said very shockingly, you're a Christian, right? Then how come you read the holy book of Gita? Growing up, I was so confused. Am I doing something wrong? Why can't I read what I want? Why can't I wear what I want? Why are people always gasping or shocked or giving me the looks when I talk about myself? Isn't it normal? It was quite a task to speak anything quite freely to many people. Sharing my cultural ideologies in any discussions always involve the process of revising the opposite person's faith, their cultural background, their opinions about things, and finally coming to conclusions if whether or not they will be receptive to me. And obviously, with a lot of fear of judgment. So as you can see, I did not know that there might be even a term associated to a person like me. However, I do recognize now. My sister and I have grown up as cross-cultural kids, or bicultural, to be very exact, a person who has meaningfully interacted with two or more cultural environments for a specific period during their developmental years. My personal experience has been very focused to only two cultures but I'm not speaking on behalf of bicultural children alone. Rather, all those children who have multiple cultural identities, and especially those who have completely new identities, different from the culture of their lineage. Because being multicultural has its advantages, but 
disadvantages too. Studies show that the growing up life experiences of multicultural kids have sharpened their minds. And they are quite capable of surviving in diverse areas. It is a very strong skill, useful in workplaces, as some of you might know, that helps them to adjust among people very easily. They also develop the quality of being good listeners and communicators as they have grown up to realize when to speak and what to speak. But all these skills are attained after many complex interactions with the world. Having an identity crisis and the feeling of not being completely accepted by either side well can confuse their minds. Constantly trying to adjust and fit in, the lack of command over their native language, practicing a unique lifestyle that might look weird to others, sometimes being a subject to bullying and teasing, and the lack of inclusivity are challenges that multicultural kids never really acknowledge, but face very frequently. And for the very same reasons, I adapted the third-person point of view. Now you might ask, why should we implement the third-person perspective while interacting with people? Well, many years back, after people started migrating due to wars, for better employment, for peace, education, safety, people have settled in new environments. Everyone now has new identities. So we all need to understand that we are no longer bound to be the representatives of our native culture. We can be the representatives of the culture that we choose to be in and the way we define our cultural identity. This perspective helps reduce bias. Listening to people's life experiences will start to be really inspiring and fascinating. And opening ourselves to new possibilities will do nothing but self-growth. This perspective also helps shape our personality on a personal and professional level by helping in conflict resolution. When you don't get personally involved in the conflict and keep yourself rational, it helps in analyzing the situation. You remain calm and more composed because you won't view yourself as a subject to the problems, but rather as a viewer. This perspective has proven to be a very strong weapon against being gaslit, toxic relationships, and many fraud traps. One of the most important goals of people nowadays is stronger relationships, be it between friends, colleagues, our teachers, even among the nations. And the key to a good relationship is acceptance and communication. So in very simple words, the third person perspective helps you to accept people regardless of their culture, faith, or race, because you will start appreciating people for their individuality. Their thoughts, their intellect, their views, and most importantly, their personality. You become more receptive to new ideas and new trends, which creates a very positive balance between the generations as well. When you cultivate the habit of appreciating people for who they are, you will observe a similar treatment towards you. So ladies and gentlemen, our interactions with others are often colored by preconceived notions and stereotypes. To those of you who have never faced cultural discriminations, it is essential to realize that diversity is a fundamental aspect and we must move beyond those shallow judgments. And to those of you who have faced 
the challenges of multiple cultural identities, I encourage you to proudly embrace yourself. When we hold our identities with confidence, the society is most likely to follow suit. Be it cultural or even personal, like some of our unconventional traits, acceptance and understanding should always be our goal, even though acceptance might still look like a facade. But gradually, embracing the diversity within us and around us will lead to a world where acceptance will be the true face of diversity. Thank you so much.